Hey, what is up guys? Today we're going to be doing problem number 1591, strange printer number two. So there's a strange printer with the following two special requirements. On each turn, the printer will print a solid rectangular pattern of a single color on the grill. This will color up this will cover up the existing colors in the rectangle. Once the printer has used a color for the above operation, the same color can't be used again. You are given an M by N matrix target grid where target row call is a color in the position row call of the grid. Return true if it is possible to print the matrix target grid. Otherwise, return false. <clears throat> okay, so we have this target grid right over here. And so we're going to start printing a rectangle. So the first print, re rectangle we print is from one to one over here. And then again, we print a rectangle two, two on top of it. And that's how we got from here to here. We have other target grid right here with color five. And as you can see, we're going from one to one. And then we print this rectangle three, three over here, then four, four, and then five, five. That's how we get here. And then we have this last rectangle right over here. Let's just draw this out. So then give us an example. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one. And as you can see, it's false because there's no way we can print a rectangle and then print another rectangle on top of it to get to this final answer. Okay. So how are we going to approach this problem? Well, we have this empty grid and we're trying to go to the target grid. And like I always say, when we have th these kinds of problems, we're going from one situation to the end, to the next, then we can also uh, reverse that process. There's, there's that way we can think of it. And we can also think of it as uh, going from the target to the end. So let's think of it like that. We're going to go from this target to the end. And so, okay, I know now I, I, I maybe instead of going this way to this way, I can go this way to this way. And how am I gonna go from here to here? Well, I know I keep adding colors, so in this case, I need to keep removing colors. So I have these color squares over here, and now I need to see, okay, which color can I remove over here first? Well, I can remove uh, four, four, this rectangle over here, and I can also remove the rectangle five. So let's just remove one of them, and instead, uh, I'll just decide to remove the rectangle four first. I remove that one, then I check again which ones can, uh, oh, five first. Which one can I remove next? Four. Which one can I remove next? Three. Which one can I remove next? One. And then I get to a final answer. And so that's how we're going to uh, approach this problem. We're going to work backwards and see which rectangles can we remove until we get, until we end up with an empty uh, 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 grid. And so over here, as you can see, let's try to remove a rectangle. Which rectangle can we remove? Well, can I remove the rectangle one? No, because there's things overlapping it. Can I remove the rectangle two? No, there's something overlapping it. So can I remove any rectangles? No. And is the grid empty yet? No. So then that's how we'll know this will return false. So now we know I need to keep removing rectangles until I get to an empty grid. And if I can't do that, I'll return false. If at any point I can't remove any rectangles, I'll return false. Now the next question is, um, how do I know a rectangle is able to remove, able to be removed? Okay. The way I know a rectangle is able to be removed is if I don't have any overlapping colors on top of this rectangle. So I see over here four to four, this rectangle doesn't have any overlapping colors, but the rectangle from one, this one at the end of the, right at this step over here has overlap, overlapping rectangle. Sorry about the background noise. Um, you see, we have this rectangle three, three, and five, five, and four, four, they're overlapping this greater rectangle, one, one. So that is uh, problematic. So the way I'll know is if I see an overlapping rectangle on that color. So if there's no overlapping uh, color, then I know I can't remove it. So we're, now that's that. But now how are we going to know the, the dimensions of our current rectangle? Because how do I know one, one, uh, 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 the boundaries are at this point, at this point, at this point, at this point. Over here, I can tell just by looking at it. I know the boundaries of the, this uh, rectangle of color one. But in code, how am I going to know that? Well, the first thing we're going to do is figure that out. And how are we going to figure that out? Well, what what is actually a rectangle? It has a leftmost point, a, a uppermost point, a, a rightmost, and a bottommost point. So I'll find the leftmost point, the bottom, top, and rightmost points. And then I'll, I'll figure out the corners of my rectangle that way. So I'll look over here and I'll see what's my leftmost one that occurs. It's all the way in index zero, right? In column zero, in row, column zero. What's my rightmost one that occurs? It's in column zero, right over here. What's my upmost, um, topmost uh, one that I see? It's in row zero. What's my bottommost one that I see in row one? And same thing for three. We'll see the top is in row uh, one, index one. The column is uh, leftmost is one, rightmost is one, uh, is, uh, sorry, leftmost is three, two, rightmost is three, 
uh, bottom most index where we see um, three is row two, right? Row of index two. So that's how we approach that. So I find my top most left, whatever. And so then once I find the corners of my rectangle, right? Then I can go through all the, the, the entire grid and see if at any point, um, if at any point there's an overlap in color. So for example, I'll go from um, three to, I'll go through this rectangle, right? Which is from a two to three, and also from here to one to three, and I'll go through this entire rectangle by right, using a double for loop, and I'll check if any of these colors aren't three, then I know there's an overlapping rectangle, and I'll, and I'll add that in. So for example, I'll start with three, three, that should be uh, over here, this three, and I see it's a three, that's good. This is a three, that's good. This is a three, that's good. This is a four, that's not good. So I'll say four is an overlapping rectangle, and now I know, and that way I'll know, uh, and, the, and the third step, which I'll explain, that four is an overlapping rectangle. So now that I get all my overlapping rectangles, well, let's just do one more example for this grid right here. So look, I find my topmost, leftmost, rightmost corners, and I'll see uh, over here, in the next zero is my left, and next one is my right, uh, top is one, zero, bottom is two. So I'll get my corners, and I'll know my corners is th these points right here, these four, right? So now, then when I'm checking if anything's overlapping it, I'll go through this entire grid right over here, this subgrid. In this case, it's an entire grid, but in this case, we saw it was a subgrid. And I'll see if there's any overlapping colors that are not one. So I'll go through it. This is a one that's good. This is a two that's not good. So this is overlapping. I'll add two to my overlapping and I'll go keep going, keep going, two again, two again, two again. And so I know two is overlapping. Then I'll try to remove two and then uh, we'll keep going that way. So that's the next step. We're gonna keep trying to remove the colors. So now I know two is overlapping, so then I'll try to remove the two, and then I'll try to remove the one. <clears throat> so I'll see this now, and I see two is overlapping, so let's try to remove the two. I'll try to remove the two, but then for this two, right, if we do the same thing for two, you'll see this two's rectangle is also this. I'll see one is overlapping two. One is in the middle of two's um, rectangle, and, and two is in the middle of rect one's rectangle. So we have some kind of cycle going on here. When I try to remove all the overlapping rectangles for rectangle number one, I encounter two in the way. So then I say, okay, let me try to remove two. But then when I try to remove two, I see I, I'm trying to remove one again, and therefore that's impossible because then I'll try to remove one, then I'll try to remove two, then one that is gonna keep going back and forth. In this case, this is possible. For example, over here, let's try to remove one. I'll try to remove one, and I see three is overlapping, four is overlapping, five is overlapping. So let's try to remove one of them. I'll try to remove the three. So then I try to move the three and I see four is overlapping three. So then I'll try to move the four. I can remove the four. And since I can move the four, then I can move the three. And now that I move the three, can I remove one yet? No, I still have five. So now I'll try to move the five. Can I remove the five fully? Yes, nothing's overlapping five. So I move the five. And then finally, everything's removed from one. And then I can um, remove one. And then all the colors have been removed. Same thing if we started at three. Let's try to move three. I see four is overlapping. Then let's try to move four. I can properly remove four, so I remove four, then three is free to be removed, I remove three, then I go to the next color, let's say it was five, I try to move five, five is good to go, I remove five, then I go to one, the next color, and then I see, can I remove it? Yes, all these are gone, the three is gone, the four is gone, the five is gone, I can properly remove the one. So that's how we're going to approach this problem, and I'll show you the code in, I'll just show you right now, it's right here. So, like we mentioned, the first step is to um, find the boundaries, and how are we going to do that? Well, I'm going to create this hash map. And so this, the, inter, the key is going to be the color, and the, this list is going to be a list of size four, and it's, going to create, and it's going to have my boundaries. So I'm going to go through the entire guard, target grid, and as you can see, we have our two-dimensional, uh, two, two double four loop. And I grab the color, and then I grab the extremes. How am I going to grab the extremes? Well, I'm going to see if I have a, a, a list already for the color, this color, get or default. And if I don't, I'm going to create this new list. And it's going to have uh, the topmost, le leftmost, bottommost, and rightmost. And then I'm going to reset the extreme. So for this color, I'm going to check: is my uh, current um, <clears throat> is my current topmost value um, greater than or less than uh, the current the value for this color that I current have? So which is i, right? And so I see: is i smaller or uh, what I currently have with extremes? I get zero, which is uh, the topmost value is that smaller. So if i is smaller, meaning if it has a smaller index, meaning it's higher up then I'll set i to uh, this new value again, right, to zero again. And we're gonna do the same thing for one, same thing for two, and the same thing for three, and then I'll add it back into my colors.
right? So that's what we're basically doing right here. We're finding the boundaries, the topmost, leftmost, rightmost, and bottommost boundaries right over here. And the next step we're doing is going, we're going to find all the overlapping rectangles as we talked about. So I'm going to go through all my colors. I'm going to grab the boundaries and I'm going to go through that subgrade. So this double, the for loop right over here is going to go through my subgrade. As you can see, I'm, I'm getting zero. And so zero is my uh, topmost value. And I'm going to go to my bottommost value, which is two right over here, right? I'm going from the top to the bottom and then I'm gonna go from uh, um, left to right, which is this, this inner for loop right over here. So I'm going from top to bottom, left to right. I'm going through that entire subgrade and I'm checking. If it's not the color that it's supposed to be, right? If it's not the color that it's supposed to be for this uh, rectangle, so this was this is what this is checking, then I'm going to add it to my overlapping uh, set, right? So then this is what this is doing, I'm getting get it or default, and I'm adding this um, color to my overlapping set, and I just put it back in right over there. That's what that is doing. And then this is basically the third step, which is the gist of the problem. At the end of it, I'm going to go through all my colors as we talked about. I'm going to try to remove every single color. If I can't remove a color, I'll return false. And so what this, what is this can remove? This is basically a depth first search. Um, as you can see, we have um, can remove it here. It takes in a color. It takes in all the overlapping rectangles. And it takes in the visit status. And so what is it the visit status? The visit status is basically keeping track of whether we visited something yet, meaning it's been fully removed, or we're visiting it, meaning we're trying to remove it, or we just basically haven't seen it yet, meaning it's just... We haven't seen it yet. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to check if I visited already. That means true. I'm going to return true, meaning I can remove this rectangle, this color already. If I'm visiting, if I if I, if it's visiting already, meaning I haven't fully removed it yet, and I'm in the process of removing it, that means I encountered a cycle. That means I hit back to where I was originally, and I'm going to return false. Right. This was in this example where, where when we tried to remove one, then we can two, then we had to remove one, and so on and so forth. It's going to keep on going infinitely. So I have to return false if I see something that I'm currently trying to remove. Else, um, this is just another condition, meaning uh, if there's no overlapping rectangles for this color, I can also return true, so I'll just return true. <clears throat> meaning if it's not, uh, this color is not an overlap rectangle, meaning it wasn't there ever. Then I'm going to set this color visiting, meaning I'm currently trying to remove it. I'm going to go through all the overlapping colors I over all the overlapping rectangles in this current rectangle for this current color, and I'm going to check if I can remove them. Right, it's going to recursively call this function again. If I can remove this overlapping color, sorry, if I can't remove this overlapping color, then I have to return false. Else, if I, uh, I can remove it completely, then I'll remove it from me, my overlapping color set, right, because I don't want to keep going through it again. You kind of don't need this. I'm pretty sure you don't need this, but it's going gonna, it's gonna to increase the, the time for the time for it. And so if I can move all of them completely, then I'll set this color to visit it, meaning it's been completely removed, and then I'll return true. So also here again, if we couldn't remove it, return false, and at the end of this, when we go through everything, I'll just return true. And so that's basically the problem walkthrough for number 1591. If you guys enjoyed this, please leave a like, subscribe, and comment if you have any questions. I hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you guys for the next problem.